things on the walls. That's uh, some framed pictures of uh, I don't know, articles, European articles about me that were especially impressive. Like here's a, a Finnish crossword puzzle, newspaper crossword puzzle, and I was one of the answers to the clue. So I had to frame that and put it on the wall. So this is the second story, second floor. Very dark house. I'll be surprised if Yano can see what's going on in here. That's why we had that big room belt to get some light into the place. This is another portion of the library. These are all books on movies and television and comic book collection, reprint collections, pinball machines, just all sorts of entertainment. Uh, all my pogo books from the 50s. The uh, most in interesting thing about all these books is all, every one of them is uh, probably from the 70s or 80s. I don't, I don't really add to this collection anymore. I think I got enough books. I gotta concentrate on reading some of these before I get more. There's the EC Library down here. Stuff Disney. Where are you down there? Karl Marx books and uh, so here's here's Yano's bedroom, guest uh, guest bedroom, and uh, my wife's uh, dressing room. She probably doesn't want you in there. <laughs> we won't tell her. But here, this especially dark room, surely we've got to open the windows here. Yeah. Uh, we stopped for a minute and turned some lights on, or, or opened the drapes. And uh, this is the library, so it's supposed to be kept dark. That's good for the books. Um, so this is, uh, well, let's see, you're pointing over this way. This is sort of like the reference wall. This is uh, lots of Time Life books and lots of book sets about different uh, subjects. Nature and civilizations and history and so forth and an encyclopedia. This is sort of an obsolete thing, an encyclopedia, I guess. And an encyclopedia I had when I was uh, like in grade school and high school. And now that I'm talking about it, I still got the encyclopedia I had from when I was a little kid. And then my National Geographic collection. All in nice little slipcases. Going back uh, not too far for a magazine that's been around since the 1800s. Going back to the late 40s. Kind of like my comic book collection. My comic book collection goes back to the mid to late 1940s and then stops. Well, let's see. More book sets. Travel books. Tourist manuals. National Geographic books. This row of books here. Those are Zane Gray Western novels. A full set of those. Uh, some fancy hoi polloi books that come with a set of encyclopedia. It's the kind of stuff I'd never read, you know, Plato and Aristotle. And... Oh, I'm proud of this stuff. I got this uh, about three years ago. This is uh, pioneer audio equipment from the early 1970s, the golden age of audio equipment. Of course, it's all got wood cabinets and brushed uh, metal housing. But they never made audio equipment as good as this again. It's a radio receiver and a equalizer and a tuner, or the main receiver here. So. Old radio show. Miles Davis, that's better. Uh, here's my wife's day, uh, studio, her office. Her family, and uh, there's her. She's a, I'm only a Bachelor of Arts. She's got a Master of Education degree. And she's a Kentucky Colonel. Yeah, that's her Master's degree. Uh, I'm still interested. That's my computer. That's where I do all my communication with the world from right here. Right. Portrait of the Shadow. I'm a Shadow fan. I'm trying to buy a Shadow pinball machine right now. From the 1980s. <clears throat> Collection of uh, really nice nature books. Then over here is uh, novels, mystery novels. Maritime adventure novels, naval history, naval adventures, 
Some pretty new, some of them are old, like there's a set of uh, H. Rider Haggard books from the late 1800s and early 1900s. And some Arpaint, Arsene Lupin books. I got all those down here. Everything's in uh, alphabetical order by author. Other stuff sitting on the, just taking up space, collectors, collectible thing. My, some bottle caps I collected in the early 60s. There's old uh, MP3 discs of uh, old radio shows somebody gave me. That's my Edgar Rice, uh, complete Edgar Rice Burroughs book collection. Uh, not not original, not first editions. I'm not a, an investor, but those are those are all first reprint editions. So the, the very second editions of actually some are first editions. When when there weren't any reprint editions, I'd have to pay for the first edition. There's Cthulhu, a little cute Cthulhu from H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. And so here's where I sit when uh, I sit and read. This is where that entire documentary was filmed, that uh, rather poor documentary about the life and times of Don Rosa. That, oh, it was very, very nicely done, but it, it had no narrative quality about it. It, it didn't, couldn't tell what what I was talking about. It was too chopped up and never explained. Anyway, this is where I sit at night, late, late at night, and uh, try to read a, some tiny fraction of all this stuff here. It's, just, it's not even all of it. Here's the overflow. More books. Here's uh, the Scarlet Pimpernel books from the 1920s. Here's a, I bought myself a toy once. I thought I deserved some, uh, here's some very early edition Jules Verne books. Like second edition. Now this one here, Journey to the Center of the Earth. That's the first edition, American edition, the first English edition. That's a favorite story of mine and a favorite movie. So I bought myself that for a, I don't get expensive things very often, like the, I always trade artwork for them, but uh, that one Christmas I just decided I think I'll buy myself, for a change I'll buy myself some, something nice. So these are uh, maybe early, very early editions, just, just short of being the first editions of uh, Jules Verne's and of course the real first editions would be in French, but so these would be the first American or English edition. And then here's our, uh, my wife just recently organized all our photographs. So it's nice you're here to see this now because uh, this was before just a bunch of boxes of piles of photographs in no order whatsoever. And we spent uh, some weeks in January and February sorting them all out and putting them all in uh, nice albums. They don't seem to match, but uh, just whatever albums we could scrape together. There. Oh, there it is. Here's King Kong. Did you see King Kong? Oh, I have to. I don't make pictures of myself and put them in. Somebody sent me this, so please believe me. I don't. I don't hang pictures of myself around. But I'm not going to throw it away when the nice person sends it to me. Know, look out the window down into the the other room we were in. That's a nice view. And then out the out the other window. You can see it, uh, or if you looked at it when we were walking out here before, but uh, this is a tall bookshelf. I need to get a lighter when I want to get up. But uh, up at the top, if you can make it out in the misty darkness, is uh, some old models I used to build back in the mid-60s. I had all the monster models that came out in the early and mid-60s. I got rid of those, gave those to my nephews, who promptly destroyed them. But I kept the ones based on comic book characters. So I've got all those, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Etc. Didn't let my nephews get their hands on those. You can take a look in the 
don't tell my wife. She didn't make the bed, but uh, so don't don't dare go in there. She she'll get really mad. But that's that's the bedroom. <laughs> okay. Oh, here I'll show you something. Walk walk over uh, walk over here. This art on the the art under the light on the wall. That's actual art, which is uh, got at an art fair. That's made from uh, rail uh, railroad spikes. See all the nails welded together. Mm -hmm. That's pretty nice. But over here, which looks just as interesting, that is, well, it's art after a fashion. That is a, uh, the mold for a terrazzo table that the Kino Rosa company was going to make and apparently never finished. So we had the brass mold made. Well, let's see if I can reach it. And then uh, this would be laid on the floor, on newspapers maybe. And then um, a mixture of marble chips and cement would be poured in into these farms. And, you know, like remember, maybe this would be red marble chips would be here and blue marble chips and so it would be all different colors and then ground flat. And I found that in the attic of the Kino Rosa company uh, lost way back in the dust and cobwebs. The same way I found my uh, grandfather's trunk. You know, my family had no sense of history. They didn't get it. It was just trash. They just piled it in the back of the, uh, the workshop. So I rescued that because it looks interesting. Now we should go downstairs and uh, look at a finished table that I saved from the from the Kino Rosa Company. Here's the finished one, so you get some idea of the. Uh, this is true art, and this is also art hand-blown glass flower, but if you if it's a, see these are also little, this is looks like a much finer version than that one, but this has been uh, the brass molds, you can see the metal outlines, the metal borders, and then uh, these are very fine ground up green marble chips with green cement put here, and then yellow and red, and it's all smoothed out, and then they grind it, probably in these days by hand, polished it, made it smooth, so this is like museum quality. I don't know, you couldn't, I've never tried to look on eBay to find one of these, but I don't think you could find it. I don't know what it would cost. $50,000? I don't know. It's just the coffee table here. I'm, of course, weighs like 500 pounds. It's, now, I don't know if you're agile enough to do it, but if you crawl down and laid on the floor and looked up at it, you'd find newspaper comics from 1936. I think there's a Blondie comic. Uh, let's see what you see. There's a funny page here somewhere. So like I say, they uh, here it is over here in the corner. <laughs> they laid this on the floor on top of newspapers. Fondy. And the date, I'd have to go get a flashlight, but I remember it was 1936. Here's some more down here. Can't see the name. Actually, it's not in very good shape. <laughs> So that would tell you, might tell you exactly when it was made. So here's something we, uh, well, take a look. It's pouring down rain, so we can't take a walk in the yard. You can't see my lovely 25 acre, 10 hectare woodland preserve. So we'll have to look at a map. You are here. So that's the house. That's, you were just looking out the window out in this area. So this is the back lawn. I think you took some film or some video of earlier. Here's the main road, Dawson Hill Road. Makes a, like a 110 degree curve here. It goes off, so all these poor people, I always think the government should, should take my property and straighten that road out, but they haven't yet. Listen, listen to the rain hitting the window. Could, yeah, see, could be a tornado anyway. We, we never know in this part of the country. The other filming you did was the same day. You saw how beautiful it was. But that's, that's life in the Ohio River Valley. So anyway, so there's the driveway. Nothing is actually as straight as I show here. You know, the road's kind of crooked. The fence line has got a bend in it. But anyway, there's a pond that we back there. And then uh, now you see this, these brown lines are a network of trails I have going through the woods. 
it looks pretty screwy here, but you know, it's, believe me, it follows the lay of the land and the way the trees are. And there's the creek down the middle. There's a low swampy spot. And it's all fenced in for the dogs. Dogs have 20, at least 20 acres to run around in in safety. They can't get out and get hit by a car and other dogs or animals can't get into them. Up here I have a field. And uh, over here is a bigger one. Uh, we call this in the meadow because it's nicer. Uh, I don't own this property. This house has been abandoned for about 12 years. We're not really sharecroppers or serfs. Then this is a this is actually old dairy farmland. Uh, so the trees are kind of scraggly. The, you know, it was cleared maybe 100 years ago, and now they're growing up wild. And this area is uh, more like a virgin woods. So this is actually nicer. We. Took a walk yesterday, we didn't uh, get out there today and now it's too late, but uh, so this is, that's why there's fewer trails. Uh, it's, you know, it's a more open woods and also a creek. Uh, it doesn't run all year, but, uh, and this is all in the woods, that's the tree line. Is over here, there's another home over here. But, so this is, this is all my property inside. Uh, oh, and you saw the, uh, the aerial view, I think was kind of looking uh, in this direction. There you go, and, and here's the legend. There's the fence, the property is very anal retentive, I know, but that's the way I am. The property line, the trail, the creek, the tree line, this is a bridge, and this is a bench. And missing from this uh, view are the gazebos that I put in a few years ago. There's one in the middle of this field, right about there, and there's one over here, right about where the F is. I need to draw a uh, gazebo in here, so I'll I guess I'll have to get the F out of there.